This is 7NS1C, 7th grade number system, part 1, subpart C. A uh, lot of words, again, in the standard. I am going to do my best to just kind of clean that up a little bit, make sure that you understand the words that they're using, uh, some of the terminology. It looks like the main word in here today is the additive inverse. And... Um, Basically, you need to figure out what the distance is between two integers on a number line and how absolute value may play into that. Um, also, we're going to be subtracting integers mainly. Pause the video. A couple of terms that I'd like you to know. I believe the blue one is the new one for today, and hopefully you have the other ones in your journal already. You are going to be showing subtraction on a number line. Last time we did addition. There isn't much different today other than the signs, so I'll be using the same process as before. Four, take away three. We all know the answer to that. On a number line diagram, we start at zero. We draw the arrow going towards four. And as we did before, we're going to just kind of draw this line above for our next um, part of the problem. And it says subtracting three. Subtracting means you're going to the left three units. So let's count it out from where we are. One, two, three units to the left. end up going left at 1, just as we knew. 4 take away 3 is equal to 1. I have, I believe, a couple other, maybe three other situations where the signs are all um, kind of rearranged in different ways, all the ways that you may see them. So it might be tedious and boring. I apologize for that, but I want to show you all the different cases. This is negative 1. So now we're starting with a negative 1, and we are subtracting 5 from it. So 0 goes to negative 1. Draw your arrow. And where are we going? We are going to the left 5. Anytime you subtract a number, a, uh, subtracting a positive number, you go to the left as always. So let's count 5 units to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Draw your arrow. And where do you end up? Negative 1, take away another 5, you end up at negative 6. Third example you might see. Now the negative is with the number or the integer on the right instead of the integer on the left. So positive 3, take away a negative 6. How is that going to look? So we go from 0 to positive 3 with the arrow. And now it says subtract a negative. Well, if I'm subtracting a positive, I know I go to the left. But subtracting a negative means go to the right. So um, this is where the additive inverse comes in. We aren't going to subtract problems any longer. We're going to add the inverse. So this means adding positive 6. So what does that mean when we add positive 6 or use the additive inverse? Well, subtracting a negative really means just plain old adding. And we know that we're going to go to the right there. So we're going to go right six units. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you land at positive nine.
negative 4 subtracted by negative 5. I see that back-to-back -back negative negative again. We're going to use the additive inverse. We're going to actually change this to an addition problem. Subtracting a negative means adding. So we take our negative 4. We go from 0 to negative 4 like we always do. Straight up here, and then adding 5. Well, adding 5, instead of subtracting 5 and going left, we're subtracting a negative 5, so we're going to the right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And where do we end up? We end up right here at positive 1. So I'm going to bring back all of the rules that we talked about in the last uh, video when we were adding integers because you need to understand that adding is subtracting. Adding is the opposite of subtracting and vice versa. So we're going to utilize the same rules. However, before we do that, we are going to use the additive inverse. And then since we made it an addition problem using the additive inverse, we're going to go back and follow those rules that we used last time, right down here on the bottom. And I think you already have those written down. So you can pause the video if you understand the rules and you understand what the additive inverse is. If not, follow along with me. It says 14 take away 10. 14 subtracted by 10, you know the answer to that. But if I'm going to use this additive inverse rule, watch how this works out. This problem is going to change from 14 subtracted by 10 to 14 added to the inverse of 10. So if I have 14 added to the inverse of 10, we are now going to take our rules for adding we're going to take the absolute value of both. Recognize that we have opposite signs, so we're going to subtract the numbers and get some kind of 4. And then who wins the absolute value battle? Well, the absolute value of 14 is 14. The absolute value of negative 10 is 10. And the positive answer, which was with the 14, wins out. So the answer is positive 4. And you already knew that 14 take away 10 is positive 4. Problem 2. We are not allowed to subtract negatives. So we are going to change this into an addition problem. And the additive inverse says, let's change this subtraction sign to an addition and change the second integer to its opposite. Not all of them go opposite, just the second integer in the line. So negative 7, change it to an addition problem, change the negative 5 to its opposite, and now follow your adding rules from before. I have a negative added to a positive. Go back to your chart. A negative added to a positive. Subtract the values. So we're going to get some kind of 2. What kind of 2? All right. Absolute value time. So the answer would have to follow the original problem, which had a negative with that 7, because the 7 won out. So the negative follows into the answer as a negative 2. Third one, negative 11 take away 6. Think of it in terms of money. I lost $11, and then I lost 6 more. So that means I'm down 17 or negative 17. But let's check that out. Can't subtract numbers, so we're going to add them. Negative 11 added to, this was a 6. It's added to a negative 6. The signs are the same. Go back to your chart and find out what a negative plus negative you do. I'll just tell you right now. Go back to your chart and listen to me. 11. We're going to add these up. 11 and 6 gets you 17. Do the absolute value game if you want until you get uh, used to 
what the signs will be and the answers without having to do this. Um, so 11, 6, 11 wins out, steal the sign, negative. You can't go wrong with just following that consistent rule. Thirteen, take away negative nine. Can't subtract numbers anymore. I'm not going to allow it. We're just going to add numbers from now on. So if we add it, we have to change it to 13, add it to the negative nine. This is the additive inverse. The negative nine becomes positive nine. So it reads 13 added to nine. And you all know what 13 plus nine is. If you don't, I'm still going to follow the absolute value rule absolute value of 13 added to that 13 and 9 who wins out the 13 grab the sign from the 13 which is positive and 13 plus 9 is 22 positive 22 now a real-world situation here is a word problem pause the video I'd like to see if you can uh, put this on a number line yourself All right, here is my number line. Uh, it looks like I have some pretty large numbers, so I'm not going to be going by ones, and I'm not even going to really go by fives. I think I'm going to go by tens on this one. It's your choice. I decide to go with tens. Just right down here. Uh, probably won't have too many negatives, so maybe I'll throw a negative in there just in case. So negative 10. Uh, let's see here. Let's divide that. I need more of these. So negative 10, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Let's see if I made one large enough here. I might have to get rid of that uh, negative 10. All right, so Karen earns $50 babysitting and 30 from doing yard work. So Again, I did make a mistake here. It looks like I'm going from 50, and then I'm going to have to go higher than 50 because um, we're adding 30 onto that. So let me make that adjustment. Let's just start with a zero over here on the left. So zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. All right. So where, do, where are we? We're at $50. So I'm going to start at zero. show that $50 range. And then, put my little arrow, sorry. The next part is um, buying, no, not buying, babysitting uh, for $30. Oh, what am I thinking here? Come on, read the problem, Mr. Words. She earns $50 babysitting and then 30 more from doing yard work. So we're going to move an additional 30. She's making a lot of money here. So 10, 20, 30. Let's go with a black pen this time. And we're at $80 and then from there she decided to take some of that money and buy a $25 iTunes car so that means we're gonna be subtracting 25 from here so let's go what back 25 so 10 20 and 25 
different color here. So we go back to this arrow and it comes right down here in between 50 and 60, which would be $55. So she is up $55. If you want to put that in there, I don't think it asks for that, but she is plus $55 for all of her work and her purchase. In your journal, define the given terms from page two. As always, write a few sentences on what you believe you learned from this video. I'm, I'll be looking at those and then describe one situation in which you can interpret sums and differences of these rational numbers. See you in class.